This time we'll open up the City Council meeting Committee of the Whole for the April 5, 2022 meeting. The City Council should have the minutes of the Committee of the Whole from our March 15th meeting. Is there any additions or corrections to those minutes? If not, is there a move to approve? So moved. moved. Motion is second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the minutes are carried forth. We have a number of board and commission uh, appointments to make tonight, and Mayor Pro Tem Witten is out of town uh, on a business trip, so I'll be handling that. We'll start with the downtown design review. Um, we have one vacancy tonight. The incumbent is Anna Solomon. She has served one full term. She has applied for a second full term. I'll nominate Anna Solomon for a second full term. Second. I have a motion second. Is there any discussion or comments? If not, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> and that carries, and we'll confirm that later on in the agenda. Historic Preservation Commission, we have two vacancies tonight. The terms begin April the 21st uh, of 2022, and they will end April 20, 2025. We have one incumbent that is uh, seeking actually a third term. I would like to nominate Mabin Beard to serve a third full term on the Historic Preservation Commission. Second. All right, have a motion to second. Any comments or questions? All right, all in favor of nominating, of appointing Maven Beard, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And that carries forth. Thank you. And then Mr. Christian Dagg, we appreciate his work with the Historic Preservation Commission. He has decided not to seek a second full term. Um, so at this time, I'd like to nominate Mr. Gorm Bird. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any comments or questions? All in favor of Mr. Gorham Bird, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And that motion carries, and we'll confirm that later on. And we certainly thank Christian for his service. And then finally, Planning Commission. We had six outstanding applicants. We interviewed three of those applicants uh, tonight, uh, and this is to fill the unexpired term of Mr. Mac Lazenby. Certainly, we thank Mr. Lazenby for his service. Uh, this term will begin immediately and will end July 31, 2023. I'd like to nominate Dr. Joe Astrup. Second. second. All right, have a motion and a second for Dr. Astrup. Are there any other nominations? Yes, I would like to uh, nominate Dr. Joanne Abram. All right. Second. All right. All right, so there's a motion and a second for Dr. Joanne Abrams. At this time, is there any discussion? Um, well, yes, I, I, my nomination for uh, Dr. Abram. All three candidates did an excellent job at the interview and everything. And, uh, and you know, it was a hard decision to make. Um, but when, I, when uh, I went back and looked at some of the notes and everything, I was really impressed with all of them, all of three of them interviews, but uh, I was really impressed with the fact when we talked about the uh, 10 to 20 year plan, mm -hmm. and she was talking about balance. And so that was rather impressive to me and is one of the reasons why I chose her as a nomination for this position. Sure. Thank you, Ms. Taylor. Any other comments regarding this? Okay. All right. So we'll begin with uh, Dr. Astrup. All in favor of Dr. Joe Astrup, please say aye. 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 All right. Well, we'll do that with a hand count if we could, Lindsay. So all in favor of Dr. Astrup, please raise your hand. That's fine. Okay. And so we will confirm Dr. Astrup later on in the agenda. I will agree with uh, Ms. Taylor. We had three outstanding interviews, and I appreciate everyone seeking uh, this position. Uh, planning is so important to our, our community, and um, there's so much going on, and you really have to dig in and want to be a part of it. And I thank anybody who wants to be a part of our planning commission. All right. Any questions on the agenda for the city manager? Any questions from the dais for the city manager? Okay. Seeing none, is there any other, any other things from the council? Yes, sir, Mayor, if I may. Please. Um, I have recently been contacted by several citizens complaining about the construction occurring in the city. Their main concern is why the projects are taking so long to complete. The main areas of concern have been Opelika Road, Cox Road Widening Project, and Cox and Wire Turnabout, or Roundabout, either way. I agree with the citizens that these projects seem to be never ending. I can certainly understand why everyone is frustrated and frankly have felt them have felt frustrated as well. Uh, I have a couple of questions for the city manager. Uh, yes, sir. 
When when did the Cox Road Winding Project start construction? I'll have our city engineer, Allison Fraser, speak to that. The Cox Road Widening Project started in June of 2020. And we're not completely through yet, are we? The project is substantially complete. Um, the only item that <laughs> remains that we are aware of is the permanent striping and markings. There is one uh, contractor in the whole state of Alabama that does permanent stripings and markings, so we're at their mercy, um, not only for this project, but, but uh, several other projects. Is it normal to take t uh, two years to do something like that? It, it can, um, is it normal? It depends on the scope of the project. Uh, projects can be extended because of weather delays. We can extend the scope of work and sometimes it's contractor efforts or lack thereof which extend projects. Uh, when, when do you expect it to actually can be completed with the reflectors and striping and all that? We are waiting on the striping contractor. Um, they actually have our city restriping project um, and they tell us we check on them every every few months and they say in a few weeks we expect them to be here this month and hopefully when they come into our city project they will also button up some of the other projects that we are not directly managing like Cox Road. Thank you. Uh, do, do we take any type of recourse for, against the contractor for taking so long on these projects or <coughs> do you have a mechanism for making sure are rewarding if he finishes early or something like that. So one of the things we've we've looked at recently is adding incentives and disincentives to our project. So um, in the case of the roundabout, it includes an incentive. However, the contractor did not meet the deadline to get that. Um, but our contracts do include liquidated damages for damages that we incur beyond the contract time. I would say. Um to, to the entire council while contractually we're a little careful about the things that we say um, we're, we're well aware of what's in the contracts and we will we will handle accordingly um, anything that we are able to handle based on certain circumstances and that goes for any contract the city has not just the ones mentioned tonight um, we take them very seriously um, also one of our challenges with these we've had a few folks and we'll get to some other projects in a minute um, have some concern why don't you just change contractors in the middle of a project and get a different one. Um, in this day and age, it's very hard to find any road building contractors. And once one gets started, mm -hmm. nobody's going to come in and, and follow up their work and guarantee it. Um, so anything that we're doing with any project, even if it's taking too long, we'll let that project finish. We'll evaluate. Um, our engineers keep very detailed notes. We'll evaluate. And contractually, if there's things that need to be dealt with, they'll be dealt with through the city attorney's office. Yeah, I was just curious if there was actually a mechanism for making that happen. Uh, you know, I, I believe in rewarding if you finish early, but if you finish late, I think something ought to be done. Oh, absolutely. Uh, this council has been very uh, interested in that before, asking us could we get things moving sooner, and we have made attempts if there are contracts that do not involve the Alabama Department of Transportation. Um, and what I mean is sometimes we get some funding or it involves their right of way. Um, those are different as to whether or not they can have it. If it's a city controlled project, we are building in standard. I believe in that as city manager. When it comes to road projects, the public wants them done as quickly as possible. Um, I also think the public's a little frustrated that we just don't have contractors work in the middle of the night only. I wish it was that simple um, to convince a contractor to do all of their work overnight. When our water resource management um, team fixes water or sewer lines or replaces them, often they do the work at night uh, because that's our own city employees and we're very grateful of the sacrifices they make. With our contractors, it's a little tougher right now, um, but it's always on the table for us to look at. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with you about people can get anxious, but, uh, you know, two years on one road is... I just, I don't understand it. Uh, where are we at on the roundabout? Is it complete now or? The roundabout is substantially complete as well. Uh, they placed the wing surface last week, I think it was. Um, but we're also at the mercy of the striping contractor. We also need to do a final punch list walkthrough to develop a list of things that the contractor needs to do as part of completing the project. Allison, can you explain what su substantially complete is just to the council so they understand that's a contractual term we use? Thank you. Yes, mm -hmm. substantially complete for us is when they've completed all of the major items of work. Um, we used to include striping on that, but once we got down to one striping contractor in the state, substantially complete means they've completed 
essentially everything up to that point. Um, they may have some minor grading to do, some grassing, just minor things to, to finish it. Um, but we hold money and retainage until the project is complete, complete. Also, uh, could you give us an update on the Oplaka Road project, when it was started and, and uh, when it's due to be completed? The Oplaka Road project started in 2019. No, 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 no. No, yeah. 21, I'm sorry. <laughs> No, it was originally it was COVID delayed. We were we were in the middle of bidding it, and COVID happened, and we twenty. I'm sorry. We, yeah, we stopped, and in twenty, we picked it up later in twenty. Thank you. In twenty, um, we've had some design issues on Opelika Road, conflicts with utilities that were not located during design. We've had to redesign a good bit of the storm sewer system. Uh, some of the lighting has been impacted by fiber optic lines, and um, but the contractor is anticipating being complete with the north side of the road, which is the side Niffers is on within the next couple of weeks. Um, and then we'll shift traffic because we still have to construct the medians on the interior lane. So it is not complete yet. Obviously, it's not complete. Right. Uh, so when, uh, I may have missed it, but when, do you, when are you looking for it? What's your best guess when it's been completed? Uh, Councilman Dawson, I would say my best guess, educated guess, based on what's left to do, it would be early summer before they finish. And that's pending any any significant weather issues that might come between now and then. Yeah, because uh, you got some businesses out there that are hurting, I feel like, because of this. And they're, I can understand their, their pain, and I, uh, frankly, I tend to agree with them. Uh, <laughs> And I'd also like to point out, this is a former right-of-way uh, owned by the Alabama Department of Transportation that was given to the city. Um, and one of the reasons we didn't have all the data on it, we didn't realize there's a there's a weird thing sitting in front of Niffers, like a gigantic hole with a concrete barrier, and a lot of people have asked what that is. Uh, the city engineer explained, but I'll explain in city manager terms. We also learned there's concrete underneath and in the middle of this road, and when they got to, to digging to do water lines and other things, they found what, Allison? Concrete. Yeah. That's Megan say. Yeah. And it's not been easy um, to repair now. Um, it's not certainly not an excuse. We, we acknowledge that, but short of jackhammering down in the middle of Opelika Road. Um, it's not a road that we previously maintained. And so this project hasn't gone as we wish. Um, the Midtown development was the reason that we pulled the trigger on this phase out of order versus other phases of Opelika Road. And I wish that it had gone better. Um, but there's been a number of things that have happened, um, some within our control and some beyond our control. And so we know the traveling public has much to say about it on social media. Um, and we clearly understand that, but I would also appreciate if you have specific questions, please call the city, please email, please put it in on fix it. We'll be happy to address your concerns directly. Um, the speculation on social media is challenging um, because everybody uh, is, is gleaning information from citizen to citizen and the city would love the opportunity to talk to citizens directly to have questions. Uh, I, I just want to say I, I understand the citizens' concerns, and I appreciate it, and I, I'm, I believe the city is working hard <coughs> from listening tonight to Ms. Ms. Frazier talk, working hard to get this completed. I, I understand it. sometimes things are going to happen where you can't, you know, it's going to run you, make you run late. But I, I'd like to ask you, Megan, uh, and I, I, I'm not asking because I really don't know, are we communicating enough ourselves through social media and, and other ways to let people know what's going on or give updates? on it weekly or we, we are not for opalika road giving weekly updates we tend with a road project to give updates on social media about closures or shifts in traffic or new traffic signals going to flash we had we got heavily criticized on social media about a signal going to flash on glen avenue and that it was dangerous we're required by law to have the signal flash for X amount of days before we can put it into operation. So it's not a choice. It's not the city being bureaucratic. It is a law we have to follow. Um, in general, we will be launching shortly a new capital improvement um, program, which is all of our capital projects portion on our website that will have more timely updates on it, and we'll be pushing out on social media more information to direct citizens to that area that gives um, more more updates than than say quarterly. They'll be at a minimum monthly updates. And then there's some projects like Sanford and College and Sanford and Gay Street that we're about to tear up. That will they'll they'll have a a little more active uh, participation because there's going to be so many lane shifts, closures at certain times. Not football, 
uh, that we'll, we need to notify everybody and we need to push that out. So we'll be doing that. And think, you, you'll see the same on Opelika like Road. I think we could get more information out there. I think it would help our citizens a lot. Absolutely. Uh, at least they'll know, hey, Cox Road's going to be blocked today or yep. Oak Road's going to be doing this. Or yeah, that. and we do that frequently. If there's any lane closures, it's out there. We've been pushing it out for a long period of time. So we, we very much encourage people to subscribe to eNotifier. They can choose what they want because it'll push emails or text messages, but they can also subscribe to our social media channels, and we're happy to assist with that if somebody's unsure. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you for everybody's very hard much. work. Well, and to follow up on that, if I may, you know, and, and not to not to heap on, but the 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 general update, you know, on on Opelika Road in particular, we mentioned the hole in front of uh, in front of Nippers, and perhaps that's a median issue, you know, that we, we have to, to to deal with after the fact, but that is something that seems to have been a um, you know an ongoing obvious issue that perhaps we could educate people on, like look, you know, this is an this is an issue, this is something that's going to be on the tail end of the project. That um, you know, we didn't just pack up and leave in the middle of the night, and leave this hole in the middle of the street for months. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I, you know, I, I will support Councilman Dawson in, in that. I, I think it's we've all heard, you know, what why in the world would well, we could repave up like a road in, in the time that, that we've been working on it. And, and I understand all the the issues, but communication would be key there. And my second issue, while I've got the microphone, you know, we we've mentioned one paving, excuse me, one striping contractor in the state. Do we require certain certifications for striping contractors? So you'll or see t temporary striping. You see that in a lot of places now. The, the best way to know if it's permanent, it's called thermoplast, and it's sparkly. <laughs> it has the reflection. It's reflective, and so permanent striping makes it, in, in uh, especially inclement weather and other things, much easier to see. So if it looks dull um, or seems to be washing away, a lot of that is... Uh, is temporary striping thermoplast has a longer life on it there are different grades of thermoplast um, all the wonderful things you learn as city manager but uh, we we use a higher grade of thermoplast so it'll last longer and it is safer but yeah there is one contractor we have looked um, and are continuing to look at a small thermoplast machine that could do some crosswalks um, limited striping but not something like east university drive and we're still evaluating that and we'll be talking about it during the budget whether we're going to go there or not okay. chief i appreciate you bringing this up um, uh, i just want to say to our community that we know that this is frustrating and certainly to the businesses particularly those in opelika road i feel for you um, i was at one of those businesses last week uh, with all my family enjoying dinner and it was complicated to get in and out of there. Um, I want the community to know that the city staff is doing all that they can to get these projects moved forward. And um, obviously, um, you know, tonight we talked about more aggressive ways that we can communicate what's going on with all these projects with our community. And I would hope that we will move forward and do that uh, and be as intentional and as aggressive as we can telling our citizens what's going on. But um, I know you're frustrated and I appreciate your patience and, um, you know, it's our desire to get these finished as fast as possible. It's been a long time and we know that. Okay. Uh, Mayor, he, yes, ma'am. I'm I sorry. Like to say something also. Um, I, I, and I can understand the frustration of the community and everything about the roundabouts and the construction going on. Fortunately, uh, uh, I do work with contracts. Uh, every day. I, that's that's my job at Tuskegee. So I work with those and when it come down to actually, and I, and I, I sort of kind of want to defend the contractors a little bit, what I'm saying is, is because uh, even when you, and I'm not out in the field, but I work in the office part of it, so I, I understand what be going on with a lot of this uh, construction and stuff. When you got contractors in there, and, and they, even they just signed a contract for a starting time and a finish time. The, the main factor a lot of time is the weather. And I know, I, I can't remember if it was 2019 or 2020, but we had a lot of rain one of those years, a lot of rain. So that, that, that prolongs, um, you know, the construction, that prolongs the time. Sometimes you have to stretch it out, st stretch the time out. The community does not know that which is a good point that you made about, you know, putting it out there. And they don't understand that sometimes uh, the project is not going to go as, as it's supposed to go. 
And um, so when, when, when things like that happen, uh, mainly the main things that really happen is either it's going to be weather or some type of unforeseen um, item or, or, or project that happened on the ground or whatever. And so then you got to stretch out the contract and you got to do change orders and you got to do all this different kind of stuff. But, but uh, and, and that just, just to say that part of it as far as the construction and the contractors go. But the, the, now, uh, speaking of Cox Road, and I travel that every morning going to work. The only problem I have in that intersection, in that uh, roundabout, is I don't really think people understand how you're supposed to yield in those things. And I've, I, and I've seen several accidents, including myself, that, well, this person thinking they're supposed to go and this person thinking, and everybody going at the same time. So I don't know, and, and I haven't paid attention, uh, Megan, whether there's enough yield signs out there or how that's supposed to go, but I know it can be confusing. Some mornings, and and I've like to got hit, or I've like to hit somebody, cause I think I'm thinking that I'm supposed to go before them, and they thinking they supposed to go before me, and that's the problem I done had on Cox Road, and I go every morning. That's where I travel, going to Tuskegee every morning, and I and I'm thankful for it. The cones, all those cones and stuff, that's confusing. You get up on the, on those things, and they confusing. On Opelika Road, it's almost like. And I travel that road a lot, too. It's like just before you get, if you're coming out of Opelika and you're meeting into it and the track and that little arrow that telling you to go stay over in this lane, it, it looked like those cones need to be pushed up a little bit because you got a car on the side of you. Then you riding this side and you don't know whether to get over. They don't know whether to go your way. And so, so it, it, it's sort of confusing right there, and those are the issues I got with it. It's not so much uh, the time it's taken for the construction. Open like a road, yeah, but not Cox Road, because we had a lot of rain one year. And, um, but it, it's, uh, it's sort of confusing with that roundabout. Well, I appreciate your observation, but I don't think it takes two years to go a mile of paving and clearing the side of the road. Two years is a little bit long, Connie, for anybody. <laughs> Well, um, uh, yeah, well, I know, you know, that's standing on the outside looking in, so it, it may appear that way, but, hey, that, that's me. That's my opinion. Just like that's your opinion. Yes, Kelly. <laughs> yeah, I, this is related to uh, what Chief Dawson has mentioned here, and I, he and I were talking about, uh, I guess, part, part of this is because we only get one bidder on some of these big projects like this, and that may be an action that the city council can uh, – take note of. Uh, maybe we ought to ask more questions and not allow a contract to be awarded if there's only one bidder. You know, uh, maybe we ought to take in uh, past performance as a criteria before we authorize the city manager to go and execute these contracts. So, I mean, there's some things like the pool chemicals, which we'll see tonight, which is we got to have those before summer. That's fine. Only one bidder on that, as we'll see later on tonight. But huge projects like this, when you have a single contractor, you got us over the barrel. You know, maybe uh, we don't want to let that contract that particular time. That's something that, that we as a council should take into consideration. I just always thought this uh, state required three bids. No, uh, we're required to bid it. And if we don't get bids or we only get one bidder, sometimes there's some negotiation. But um, there are only specific reasons why we either have to accept a bid if we want to move forward with the project or reject it for specific reasons, but we can't. We will have to talk to the council um, another time about all the ins and outs of contracts because there are very specific things we have to follow with public works bid law um, that are not, of course, like everything, very complicated. So we're happy to go over that with you if you want to learn more about it. Do, do, uh, does, does the city of Auburn follow the Allen Dot guidelines? Or are we pretty much in line with what they do, or is it we different from them? Kind of depends on um, what you're referring to on on public works bid law. We have bidding a road project that's just the city of Auburn that doesn't involve any state funding, what have you. We're following state law in terms of our bidding requirements. But there are projects where ALDOT 
is involved due to funding or it involves their right-of-way where we also have to follow their standards, specifications, and details. Then there's also some other things we'll talk about, LDOT standards that are just in our construction manuals because that's normal. So it's, it's, it's a very complicated process, but we do bid. They call it letting projects, which is awarding bids, and they do some things slightly different than we do. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else from the council? Not is there a move to adjourn? So moved. All right, we are adjourning the Committee of the Whole, and it is 7.20, so we'll go right into our City Council meeting. I'll call to order tonight's Auburn City Council meeting for April the 5th, 2022. And Lindsay with a roll call. Dawson? Here. Dixon? Here. Griswold? Here. Cody? Here. Parsons? Here. Smith? Present. Taylor? Here. Whitten? Andrew? Here. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and then remain standing for a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Since it is the first meeting of the month, we'll recognize our outstanding employees with our Employee of the Month and Service Awards, and there'll be a, a couple of other videos recognizing some outstanding young people at Auburn High School. I'm Mayor Ron Anders, and we're proud to introduce you to our April 2022 Employee of the Month, as well as a number of other city employees and, special, and their special recognitions. Today, we're proud to introduce you to the City of Auburn April 2022 Employee of the Month, and I have a memorandum here from Dan Ballard, the Interim Director of Public's work, to Public Works, written to Megan McGowan Crouch, the Auburn City Manager. The purpose of this memorandum is to nominate Mark Dumas as the City of Auburn's April 2022 Employee of the Month. Mark accepted his current position as a right-of-way maintenance worker within the Public Works Department in June of 2020. After faithfully serving more than 24 years as the collection system maintenance worker within the Water Resource Management Department. Mark immediately familiarized himself with the various duties and tasks of the right-of-way maintenance division and has since distinguished himself by exhibiting a strong work ethic, care of, and support for his fellow crew members and an eagerness to learn and grow within his new position. Over the course of the last two years, Mark has demonstrated a strong affinity for taking on tough assignments and a high capacity for learning new skills and operating the various equipment required to maintain the city's rights way in a safe and attractive condition. Mark has taken the initiative to become a highly skilled operator of the tractor-powered boom mower. This has vastly expanded the right-of-way division's capacity to perform necessary cutbacks of vegetation to maintain city standards associated with minimum site distances and clearances along our hundreds of miles of roadway. Overall, Mark leads by example in his service to Auburn and represents the city's core values through his words and his actions on a daily basis. His contributions to the Public Works Department and to the city of Auburn are commendable and deserving of praise and recognition. For these reasons, I, Dan Ballard, the Interim Director of Public Works, nominate Mark Dumas for the city's Employee of the Month for April 2022. We have a special recognition for a number of our employees here at the City of Auburn. They'll be recognized for the State Excellence and GIS Award for Auburn's Street Tree Explorer. I have a memorandum here from Greg Nelson, our Chief Information Officer, written to Megan McGowan Crouch, the City Manager. In late November, local, state, and federal and private GIS practitioners gathered in Gulf Shores, Alabama for the 2021 GIS of Alabama Conference hosted by the State of Alabama Geographic Information Office. A surprise in this year's conference was a special recognition of the City of Auburn in the new Excellence in GIS Award. Secretary Hal Taylor and Chief Ge Geographic Officer Philip Henderson presented the award to the city with special recognition of our Street Tree Explorer mapping application. The Street Tree Explorer educates citizens on the value of urban and right-of-way trees. A team from Public Works and Information Technology collaborated on this uniquely Auburn presentation on the value of trees. The online map, which you can find at auburnalabama.org slash streettreeexplorer, 
teaches citizens both the economic and ecological value of trees based on where trees are located, the kind and health of each tree, and the care, and the care staff provides. Credit to Ann Randall, Public Works Urban Forestry Specialist, Will Kimry, IT GIS Developer, Laura Arori, former IT GIS Analyst, Britt Johnson, IT GIS Business Analyst, and Christopher Graff, Deputy Chief Information Officer, for creating this powerful education tool for our citizens and for demonstrating the greater potential that comes from working together to achieve a common goal. Thank all of y'all for your hard work. We appreciate it. Today we have a special recognition for Ms. Michelle Wall. I have a memorandum here from Kristen Reeder, our Human Resources Director, written to Megan McGowan Crouch, the City Manager. Upon being promoted to the HR Business Partner Manager role, Michelle set her sights on earning the Senior Certified Professional Designation through the International Public Management Association for Human Resources. This designation requires, a, requires passing a rigorous test and is a demonstration of Michelle's mastery of the knowledge of the human resources field. Her leadership and guidance are critical to the success of our department. I'm pleased to nominate Michelle for an achievement award, recognizing this accomplishment in her, her career with the city of Auburn. Thank you, Michelle. We're proud today to be at Auburn High School recognizing our recent state champions. And I have a resolution here from the City Council, and I'd like to read that. Whereas the City Council is pleased to honor Auburn City Schools, its faculty, staff, and students for their excellent achievements and contributions both inside and outside the classroom. And whereas Auburn High School's Charlie Sexton recently won the 2022 Alabama High School Athletic Association's 7A Individual Track State Championship in the indoor 60 meter dash. And whereas Charlie, a member of Auburn High School's class of 2022, finished with a time of 6.84 seconds and is now the Auburn High School record holder in the indoor 60 meter dash. And whereas during the 2020-2021 season, Charlie ranked 10th in the 100 meters, 6th in the 400 meter and ended the season with a second place finish in the 200 meter at the state outdoor meet. Now therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Auburn, Alabama, that the council hereby recognizes and formally congratulates Charlie Sexton for his outstanding achievements and his exemplary efforts in representing Auburn City Schools and the City of Auburn. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be spread upon the minutes of this meeting and presented to head coach Ledetric Oliver and Charlie Sexton, adopted and approved by the City Council by the City of Auburn, Alabama, this fifth day of April 2022. Congratulations, Charlie. We're very proud of you. Whereas the City Council is pleased to honor Auburn City Schools, its faculty, staff, and students for their excellent achievements and contributions both inside and outside of the classroom. And whereas Aaron Clarkson, a 10th grader at Auburn High School, earned an individual state championship in the 102 pound division of wrestling. And whereas Aaron competed against a wrestler from Daphne High School at Thompson High School in Alabaster, Alabama, and ultimately took her opponent down and won by way of a pin. Now therefore be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Auburn, Alabama, that the council hereby recognizes and formally congratulates Aaron, head varsity coach Joe Eckhart, assistant coaches Corey Cotter and Nathan Baker for their outstanding achievements and their exemplary efforts in representing Auburn City Schools and the City of Auburn. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be spread upon the minutes of this meeting and presented to head coach Joe Eckhart. Adopted and approved by the City of Auburn, Alabama, this fifth day of April, 2022. Congratulations. We're very proud of you. Coach, congratulations. 
Okay, thank you for that video, Greg, and thank you for our public affairs staff for putting that together. <laughs> Certainly, we're so proud of Mark Dumas and our other employees. We appreciate our, our employees being recognized down at the beach with that GIS uh, recognition for Street Tree, which I had a hard time pronouncing that day, but uh, um, very unique and very Auburn-like for us to do something special and be the first ones in the state of Alabama. Uh, and certainly we're proud of our students and our athletes over at Auburn High School. Chief, I don't think you ever ran a 6'8", 60 meters, did you? No, uh, 6'9", I think. Okay, it was close. I thought you were close. <laughs> Well, very proud of Charlie, and he's having a great outdoor season uh, so far as well, but we're very <laughs> proud of all of them. Uh, during the Committee of the Whole tonight, we had a number of uh, board and commission appointments. We City Council reappointed Miss Anna Solomon to the Downtown Design Review Committee. Uh, the City Council reappointed Mabin Beard to serve on the Historic Preservation Commission and appointed Gorham Bird to serve on the Historic Preservation Commission. And then the City Council appointed Dr. Joseph Astrup to serve on the Planning Commission. Some announcements I have tonight. Um, the Tiger Trail of Auburn has been on hiatus for a couple of years due, due, due to COVID, and we'll, have, we'll be having our first uh, ceremony in three years this Friday night at the arena. I think Miss Hovey is here. Miss Hovey, if you are here, do we have any more tickets available for the public? Okay, good. Miss Hovey would love to accommodate you. We'll be uh, installing eight members, eight former athletes from Auburn University that all have very unique and special stories. Uh, if you love Auburn and want to hear uh, some great experiences uh, from former athletes, uh, we encourage you to come spend a couple hours with us Friday afternoon uh, at the Auburn Arena. Uh, last uh, Friday, I uh, was uh, proud to go over to Opelika and be a part of the Going Blue. It was an autism recognition uh, event they had at the courthouse, and I appreciate all the efforts uh, to support those families who have uh, members of their family with autism. Tomorrow, myself and Mayor Fuller will be joining Ms. Laura Cooper at the Lee County Youth Development to sign a proclamation. Uh, this is Child, uh, Child Abuse Prevention Month, and uh, certainly I'm proud to be a part of that recognition. The kind people over at Auburn United Methodist Church had me over last week to speak to the REACH ministry. Uh, this is a ministry that is in support of families who are, uh, have members of their family that are suffering with Alzheimer's and dementia. Uh, what a great, great uh, group of people they were, and I, I was proud to be a part of that. Many of you probably saw in the media that we had a new business open in Auburn uh, a week ago yesterday, and that's Obix. Uh, the governor was in town, as well as uh, our United States representative, Mike Rogers, uh, a very proud moment for our city. Uh, I want to thank our uh, economic uh, development team, our industrial development board, for all of their hard work working with these entrepreneurs to put this data center uh, together. We certainly are proud of our partnership with Auburn University in that, and we look forward to the success of Obix uh, as it grows into the future. We've had another SGA breakfast since the last time we met and enjoyed some time with some of their new officers and look forward to some time here in the future, and I know they're here tonight. A couple of Saturdays ago, I also was on campus for the big event. Um, very excited to see uh, almost 800 students and uh, administrators and faculty, and they were signed up to, uh, to participate in almost 150 projects around our city, around the area on that Saturday morning. I'm just very thankful and encouraged that our young people that are here with us uh, think enough of us that uh, they gave up their Saturday morning to go and, and make our town and make our community and make somebody's life a little bit easier. So thank all of them for doing that. A couple of weeks ago also, a couple members of our community were inducted into the Alabama High School uh, Athletic Hall of Fame. Uh, former Auburn City School Athletic Director Wayne Murphy, who passed away about 10 years ago, was inducted in the, uh, the old-timers old category. And Coach Larry DeShera, who was a basketball coach at Lochapoca High School, he was also a school superintendent in a number of places and now works at, actually for one of our industries here, uh, was uh, inducted as well, and we're certainly proud of both of them. I know coming up soon is a lot of Easter activities. I encourage you to go to our Parks and Rec site uh, to see what is going on regarding Easter. Easter. Uh, and I want to thank all the people who were involved in the car show last weekend. All the reports I got is it was successful and things went off very well. And I appreciate uh, everybody's hard work on that. All right. Those are all my announcements. I appreciate you enduring that. Anybody else on the council have an announcement tonight? Yeah. Mayor uh, just spoke on the car show and I, I got to attend that and it was a, it was a great event. It was downtown cruising car show. Uh, there were about 50 cars that were, uh, 
I guess, allowed to be a part of the show. My car uh, actually made it in as well and uh, got to see lots of lots of unique vehicles that you normally wouldn't get to see. And I think uh, everyone that was involved just did a wonderful job uh, getting that together and look forward to a lot more in the future. Good. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. Anyone else have an announcement? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Taylor? Okay. Uh, since we last met, uh, I, I, I want to just thank Al Davis and his staff again for allowing me to host uh, at the Boykin Community Center the mother-son, uh, the co co combined mother-son, daughter-daddy dance. It was a success, and I just want to thank you for opening the doors and allowing our community to be able to have different events at the Boykin Center. And I thank everybody, you know, appreciate that, Mr. Uh, Davis. You and your staff, y'all always there and um, open the doors for us. Uh, and also, I want to also say that yesterday I was able to attend a seminar at the Jewel Collins uh, Smith Museum, uh, sponsored by Do uh, Dr. Joanne Harrell, Joan Harrell, and it was called the Becoming the Beloved Community. And it was an awesome seminar. There was different people, different speakers, a panelists of people. And uh, they had a lot of different issues, uh, um, things that they talked about to make this a more beloved community between Auburn University and Auburn. And they, they had a great panel of, of um, minorities, different minority groups talking and, and um, students and professors from different places in this world. And I got a chance to actually talk to um, the um, students and professors on the break about my experience as being the only minority on the council. And um, so that was an experience and some of them wasn't, you know, they, they was excited about it. And it also encouraged uh, a lot of them to wanna run for a political position. So, and, um, but uh, I really enjoyed it and it was a great event. Okay, thank you, Ms. Taylor. Anyone else have an announcement? Yes, Mr. Mayor, uh, the ongoing conversation with the mural committee. Uh, we met again um, last Monday and um, staff, staff had prepared for us a, uh, a document that showed other communities' approaches to uh, mural policy. Um, we are continuing our conversation and we expect to bring that conversation to the Committee of the Whole, maybe uh, this next, the following council meeting. Okay. On April 19th? Yes. Okay. Also, I wanted to uh, share with the, uh, and <clears throat> publicly thank uh, the Director of Public Safety, Paul Register. Today, I was with a group of visitors here at the municipal building uh, at the time of the tornado warnings and um, we, we got a special tour of the communication center of this building. Uh, very impromptu. Uh, Paul, you handled yourself so, so professionally given the, the amount of radio traffic and phone calls and so on uh, in front of you in the moment. But I think the group that I was with were, will go home with a, a number of good stories to share. And, and since we're in the communications uh, center, um, next week is uh, the telecommunication, Telecommunicators Week uh, where, where public dispatchers are, are recognized for the work that they do. We won't be meeting next week, so I'll take this opportunity to uh, thank the dispatching community in here in Opelika and the county. It's a tough job. I spent eight years doing it myself. and. Um, it's, it's a job that's not for the faint of heart, and we really do appreciate that level of uh, professionalism that they uh, perform every single day. So shout out to those guys. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Parsons. Okay. Everybody good? Um, yes, ma'am. I, I, I got one other announcement that, yes, I, that I wanted to make. <coughs> um, actually, last year, uh, Auburn was um, declared at a proclamation for Juneteenth. So this year we will be celebrating Juneteenth uh, on June 18th at the Martin Luther King Park, and it's going to be an all-day event. But that, that event will also be combined with the Unsung Hero uh, 
the legacy continues. So uh, everyone, the public, and everyone is invited to come out and enjoy Juneteenth on June 18th. And just in case it rained this year, it rained last year, we do have a rain uh, venue. And we'll announce that le later because we're going to uh, do a rain dance and hope it don't. We're doing a rain dance for it not to be any rain mm -hmm. that year. And we expect to, to have a, a nice um, event this year. It was nice last year. And uh, I'm inviting the council or anyone else that would like to come out and enjoy Juneteenth at Martin Luther King Park. Okay. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? Okay. We'll move ahead with Auburn University Communications. Hope y'all are doing well and stayed out of the weather today. Um, we just finished up a long week of interviewing students for director positions in SGA cabinet, so we're excited to have a full cabinet now. We have our new director of city relations, Olivia Sutherland, and assistant director Judson Lizenby. They're back there, and so they are excited to report to y'all the next year. Um, maybe they'll let me fill in. I'm going to miss this podium and my <laughs> Tuesday nights, so um, they're excited for that. SJ is also partnering with the Provost Office and Regions Bank to um, start this new thing called iGrad. It's going to be a financial um, education program for students so they can learn how to do important things like loans, manage debit, credit, things like that, things we really need to know, things I'll be attending. My parents will be glad about that. <laughs> um, and then this month, Auburn is recognizing Sexual Assault Awareness Month by educating students through social media and doing lots of social media pushes. Um, to provide educational resources and also honor the survivors of sexual assault. As for student life, students are getting through the last few months or last month of school. Um, interior design students were able to go to Hawaii recently to work on their senior capstone projects. This was a first for the program and something that they want to continue to do. And then upcoming members of the Auburn Rocketry Association, it's the Aerospace Engineering um, like Student Council, they are going to Kansas soon to work on some prestigious launch and flight events, something I would never understand, but I'm proud of them for doing that. Um, and yeah, that's about it. We're excited to continue um, SGA. I'm staying in SGA as external affairs, so um, I'll still be at City Breakfast. I'm excited, but thank you. Marie. Thank you. Thank you for all your good work. Thank you. Okay, this time is citizens' uh, communications on items on the agenda. This was only items on tonight's agenda. We do have one item at the end, a resolution that has a public hearing attached. If you would like to speak to the council about this item, please wait until the public hearing is open. Does anyone that would like to come forward and speak to the council? on tonight's agenda. Okay, seeing no one, we'll move ahead with City Manager's Communications. All right, Mayor, under City Manager's Communications this evening, I have the announcement of the following vacancy. Uh, one vacancy on the Green Space Advisory Board. The unexpired term begins immediately and ends August 7th, 2023. The appointment will be made at the May 3rd meeting. Also, in terms of the May 3rd meeting, I'd also like to remind everyone that will be the first City Council meeting that officially starts at 6 p.m. We'll be pushing that out on social, social media, but I wanted to make sure I start reminding everyone that we're aligning for uh, the resolution or that you passed recently, uh, changing the, the meeting start time from 7 to 6 p.m., which means Committee of the Whole will be um, some, somewhere between 5.30 and 6 on average. So just always going to remind you of that early and often to make sure that we get that out. Um, and to our earlier point, we'll talk about it a good bit on social media. And if you're ready to roll into the consent agenda, please. Uh, does any council member wish to remove an item from the consent agenda and deal with that item individually? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Yes, uh, I'd like to remove item 8E8 Echo. 8E. Okay. I'd like to remove item 8F, as in Foxtrot 5. And I would like to remove item 8F, as in Foxtrot. <laughs> Say that again, Connie. <laughs> Four. 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 Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Let's take those in order then, Ms. City Manager. Item 8E adopts a Community Development Block Grant 2022 act, act, Annual Action Plan. The CDBG 2022 fiscal year begins June 1, 2022, and, and anticipated federal funding is $686,092. Okay. Do I have a motion? Move for approval. Second. I right, have a motion and a second. Kelly, I'll turn this over to you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I was asked today by a citizen if the CBDG program basically only benefited 
administration and Ward 1 residents? And my answer to that was, was no, absolutely not. It's a citywide program. And so when this is discussed in, in detail, I would appreciate it if you would emphasize that point so that folks know this program, these programs are available to all of our citizens across the whole city. So I'll have all. Mr. Davis speak to that real quick because I think it's important the council understand. But generally speaking, this is federal dollars that, that come to the city to benefit low and moderate income people in our community, period. Um, no preference is given to neighborhood in terms of, of beneficiaries. It has to do with income levels as set by the federal government. And I'll have Mr. Davis expand further. That is absolutely correct. Uh, uh, our programs uh, benefit uh, Auburn citizens all over Auburn. Uh, we have individuals that uh, benefit from everything from our, our sports vouchers uh, to utility, rental assistance, uh, even the funds that we help support our uh, daycare centers. We have individuals that come from all over the city. Uh, so all of the projects, whether it's the, uh, the funding for the food bank, we just an array of things that we fund through our CDBG program benefit the entire city. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from the council? Uh, I, okay. I also had a question. Um, it says the community block grant annual action plan. 2022 action plan is is that a new the new monies we're getting that's coming in on this uh, CDBG? Yes, yes, ma'am. This is for our this this coming year that starts June first and it runs from June first through uh, May third of every year. So that's how a cycle run. Okay. Okay. So and that that's when uh, the community come in and you talk to them about how the money is going to be spent. Uh, we've, we've gone through that process where we were able to, uh, in February, uh, um, allow organizations that were interested in being funded uh, this cycle to come in and be briefed on the process, which we did do. <laughs> now, once we got those applications back, uh, we reviewed the applications, ranked them and, and those applications, and then in, in our proposal tonight is recommending how those dollars should be allocated. Oh, okay. I do think it's important to note that we do a multi-year what we call citizen participation plan that turns into a multi-year consolidated plan. And we have to do all of these plans, right. different public meetings and different public hearings, and then the action plan is, is a, is a one-year plan inside of the consolidated plan. You know, we like to talk to federal government can complicate things every now and again. Um, but what I think is really important is there's a citizen participation plan that's involved in this there's public hearings along the way people can write yeah. call email come and we, we use that data for, that gathered and information gathered to formulate our overall plan and then this is the one-year implementation year by year as we get funding now mr. Davis um, guesstimated as we say what? based on the funding we received last year it often depends on what Congress decides they are or aren't gonna do so it would could be adjusted up or down depending on the funds we ultimately receive yes Thank you. Anything else from the council? All right, we have a motion second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right. Item 8F4 authorizes a professional services agreement with HHB Engineers PC for mechanical engineering design services for the bidding and installation of air conditioning systems for the Boykin Community Center and Frank Brown Recreation Center gymnasiums in the amount of $55,345. Move for approval. Second. second. All right. Have a motion and a second. Ms. Taylor, I'll turn it over to you. Okay. I just wanted um I just wanted the public to hear that Frank Brown and Boykin Community Center uh Jim is about to get some air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> Especially the people who who work out over there. So it 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 just just something that, you know, I just need everybody to hear. <laughs> So we'd like to, to yes. speak up to that just to give you a little further idea. We estimate it's going to be about $250,000 to air condition Boykin and about $350,000 to air condition Frank Brown. Why everyone is very excited about this, um, long lead times and production delays could cause this to, to get into the fall before we, we see uh, robust activity. We would love nothing more than to get these installed sooner rather than later. We do have to design them. Um, and then go out to bid with them. But the lead time was 18 weeks, I think, the last time. Last time we talked about it. So we'll keep you apprised, but uh, 
for election season where we use these as polling locations, we do rent air conditioning. Um, we're not trying to cook everyone in there. But um, this is a much needed, staff's happy to bring this forward, and it's a much needed project. I agree with Ms. Taylor. Very exciting. <laughs> Very exciting. It's been long, long, a lot of hours in those v hot gymnasiums in the summertime. Very, Very exciting. <laughs> All right, any other comments or questions from the council? Okay. We have a motion second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And that motion carries. Item 8F5 authorizes a professional services agreement with Hydro Engineering Solutions for the Gay Street and Marion Circle drainage study in the amount of $30,000. Move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. Mr. Parsons. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to uh, pull it off the agenda so that uh, it, this, this project is happening in Ward 6. There's a number of concerned residents um, who whose yards occasionally uh, overflow with some of this runoff water. And if, uh, if it's possible, could I get a little brief description of what, what, is, uh, what this project is entailing? City Engineer Frazier. Yes, the contract will be with Hydro Engineering Solutions. Mr. John Curry is one of the top hydrologists in the country. Um, but it's going to be an analysis of the drainage basin. Um, it extends up to Auburn Junior High, well, the old junior high. East Sanford School. East Sanford School. Um, and down to Marion Circle and to Gay Street. And he's going to analyze existing drainage structures, the existing ditch, um, to determine if we have an issue or if there's mitigation that's needed in that basin. Okay, thanks. And I'd just like, on behalf of the residents, I'd like to thank you for being responsive to, to the way that they've reached out to us. And thanks. Thanks. I appreciate it. Welcome. Okay. Anybody else on the council have a question or comment? Okay. We have a motion second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion carries. Do I have a motion to approve the balance of the consent agenda? So moved. Second. I have a motion and second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the consent agenda carries forth. All right, Mayor, we don't have any ordinances this evening, so we'll roll into resolutions. Item 10A is a request from Brett Basquin on behalf of APT Investors Arch Co. Auburn Owner LLC for conditional use approval of a previously approved conditional use for a performance residential use multiple unit development located at 1397 North Dean Road in the Comprehensive Development District with a planned development district overlay. The Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval at its March 17, 2022 meeting. A public hearing is required. Move to approve. Second. second. Right. I have a motion and a second. This time I'll open the public hearing. If you'd like to address the council, Please come forward and give us your name and address for the record. See no one, we'll close the public here. Any comments or questions from the council? Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Mayor. This has been delayed once before. Uh, this is the second request for an extension. The, uh, the rationale provided is that um, they can't get building permits within in enough time to finish. What what's going on there? Why why are we delayed after two extensions on getting them building permits? I'll have Mr. Foote, our planning director, explain what he knows, and if we have further questions, we can ask the applicant. Yeah, as I understand it, this project was approved in 2020. Uh, conditional use is good for 18 months. They also got a one-time six-month extension, which is the only number of extensions you can get. So. The project will expire at the link I said in June of 2022. And so they're buttoned up against that deadline that's approaching. They're not sure they're going to be able to get their building permits pulled by that time period, which would mean the conditional use expires. So they're asking for a brand new, it's not an extension, it's a brand new conditional use. It has the same number of units. Everything is practically the same. Actually, the design's a little bit different, a little bit better. And so the Planning Commission did take a look at it and they recommend approval. So why can't they get the permits pulled? You know, I don't know the, the issues that they're having with timing as far as that's concerned. I just know that they submitted a brand new application asking to go ahead and re, not renew it, but okay, to get so a new one. It's not a city issue that's delaying Not that I'm issue. aware of. I think they're just okay. on their that's, end. That's, they're having an issue with getting wanted, everything yeah. lined up. Okay. Yes. Thank no, you. I mean, and that's the thing, to be vested, and you know, we talk much about that in many other circumstances. You usually have zoning certificates and building permits um, and to get all the way through, they've not signaled to this stage. They absolutely can't do it. They're not positive that they can. And so uh, we have a lot of development groups and engineers that are in the practice of asking well before they bump up against the deadline 
just in case instead of coming to you in June. Um, and that, that's pretty commonplace lately. And I would say um, across the board, we've seen a lot of people with challenges as usual in, in COVID getting some stuff done as we're coming out of it. And one additional question. Um, this, you know, this planning and staff normally is, is really emphasizing uh, connectivity. And this is basically a, 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 a dead end road here with 250 units being built on top of it. Is there any, are there any plans for uh, Dean to continue elsewhere or connectivity over to Shelton Mill? For North Dean Road, uh, absolutely it's on the city's major street plan to connect it all the way through. There is nothing, the developer does not control property um, where we can do that. And then uh, just above this area also was shown an east-west connection that kind of comes from behind Lee Scott Academy, is that correct, City Engineer Freighter, up, up off of North Dean Road. So we do have... The city has plans okay. for it, but it, it wouldn't be within this development's purview. I understand that. Yeah, that. I understand okay. that. Okay, I just didn't want a repeat of what we've done on Richland Road over the years with a big, big one way in, one way out um, development. Yeah, there is one you'll see to the right of North Dean Road, says outside the city limits. That's right. a small piece, and the rest of it going north was, and recently it may have changed, but under major single ownership. So there is, there is hope for this, right, this thank one. Thank you. All right, any other comments or questions? All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> and the motion carries. Item 10B1 is a request from Donald Durden to vacate unneeded right-of-way for property located at 2400 Rutland Road. A public hearing is required. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. This time we'll open the public hearing. If you'd like to address the council, please come forward and give us your name and address for the record. See no one will close the public hearing. Any comments or questions from the council? Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 10B2 is a request from Stephen and Cecilia Lau to vacate an unneeded drainage and utility easement located at 8992 and 8994 Hillendale Drive. A public hearing is required. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion and second. This time we'll open the public hearing. If you'd like to address the council. Please come forward and give us your name and address for the record. Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing. Any comments or questions from the council? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Mayor, those are all the items of business we have for you this evening. Okay. This time is your opportunity for uh, Citizens Open Forum to speak to the council about anything on your mind. We'd ask that you please come forward and give us your name and address for the record. Remember that you have three minutes. Remember your comments should be directed towards the council. Yes, sir. Hey, Mayor and um, Council. Um, my name is Robert Wilkins, uh, 261 Denson Drive, Auburn, Alabama. Um, I wanted to talk about this, the city lack of physical responsibility. Talk about Ordinance 3288, short-term rental. First, over $100,000 is spent for truck and expense, city employees and benefits and software for monitoring uh, 151 families and implementing short-term rentals, Ordinance 3288. Uh, I feel like a criminal because I have the all spent this much money to make sure that we uh, abide by the rules uh, that have been set that we feel is not correct. Um, I attended um, a state uh, court hearing on March the 17th. Uh, I noticed we spent probably $100,000, the city has, on legal expenses from a law firm in Birmingham. Uh, there are plenty of law firms here, of course, in the uh, Auburn area. And uh, it was the, the case since uh, Stephen Dixon versus the city of Auburn. Uh, it was kind of a, a total embarrassment because the, the law firm, all they talked about were cases. There were four cases in Alabama. One was budget uh, in versus the city of Daphne. There was one in, a case in Boaz, of Birmingham, and Gurley. And uh, all of them were based on commercial things. There were not anything residential at all. And they also talked about a Houston uh, case in uh, Texas. Uh, third, the city of Auburn has made, agreement, made an agreement with Airbnb in 2017, over 165,000 in revenue was collected. Uh, if you convert that to 10 years, that's at least 1.6 million, maybe 2 million or more that the city would have would get. But you've 
thrown that out. Um, also, the city accepted lodging tax from us. They, uh, uh, even the mayor took uh, our councilman, uh, uh, Dixon, uh, went to his house and looked at the Airbnb to see that it was just a regular home. And uh, something, uh, also the mayor and uh, council allowed us to operate with their approval, but then they tore away uh, our livelihood with no correspondence. This mayor and council uh, had a responsibility to keep us informed before the cease and desist <clears throat> order. That is the only thing I ever got from the council. And uh, I'm afraid next correspondence will be uh, cease uh, maybe taking my home. I don't know. I don't know what you're going to do next. Uh, there's a hotel going up, and uh, uh, you're very familiar on your stomping ground, Mayor, uh, where the Anderson Bookstore is. I wish at the grand opening that y'all would uh, have a tour also the uh, Airbnbs so you could tell the difference between a real hotel and our homes. Because I have a four bedroom home, Mr. Dixon has a one bedroom suite under his house. Auburn's growth is 4.2% since the last census. It is, it is too, simple, too much simpler to manage a growing uh, city. It's easier. I guess that's why it's easier to waste city funds. Who would be next? Anyone? Okay, so we're moved to adjourn? So moved. Yes. We're adjourned.